Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another video in this Big O mini series. In this video, we're going to attempt to solidify our understanding of O of N login algorithms by creating our very own merge sort function. If you are new here, please take the time to watch my video on O of N login by clicking the link currently displayed on your screen. Also, if you're not familiar with merge sort or how it works and why it has a complexity of O of N login, I have a video that offers a deep understanding of merge sort and its time complexity, which you can access by clicking the link currently displaying on your screen. If you've been following this series, then there's nothing that you need to do to continue with this video. But if you have not watched the previous episodes of this series, you will need to install Node.js. I explained the installation process at the beginning of a previous video in this series, which can be accessed by clicking the link currently displayed on your screen. And without further ado, let's get started. So we can start by creating a file. Let's just call it merge sort. We'll then create a function, which we'll also call merge sort. The argument to this function is going to be the array that we're looking to sort. For the first portion of this function, we'll need to make sure that the array that we're passing in has a length greater than one. We will need to do this because if the array is only of length 1 and there's only one element in the array, then it is already sorted. This will also be our base case as this merge sort function is going to be a recursive function. Next, we're going to need to split our array in half. To do this, we'll first need to find the middle index of our array. So what this math.floor here does is it makes sure that we only take into consideration the base number from the result of the division. So for example, if we divide a number that results in, I don't know, let's say 5.5, we wouldn't take into consideration the number after the decimal point. So we would only return to the variable the number 5. And this is because when taking indexes into consideration, there is no index 5.5 or 2.2 or 1.1. There would only be an index 1. 5 or 2. So this is why we're using math.floor here. And once we have the middle index of our inputted array, we can then split the array in half and create a separate array for the left side and a separate array for the right side. So we can do that by just creating a new array, left array, and then we can set left array equal to the input array dot slice. And then the indexes are going to be the arguments that we pass. So basically slices from and to. So we want to slice from the first index of our inputted array, and we want to slice up until the middle index that we just um, that we just got. And that's because we want the left side of the array. So let's say, for example, the array looked like this. And we went, we went ahead and got our middle index, which would be something like this three here. And then we want to create an array starting from this zeroth index up until our middle index, which would be the left half of the array. And then we would go ahead and do the same thing for the right half of the array. So we're going to actually go ahead and do the same thing for the right half of the array. We'll just call it right array. And we'll do array.slice again. But this time, we're just going to do from the middle index all the way until the index, the, the last index of the array. And the way we get the last index of the array is just by using array.length. And this here can actually be a bit confusing because we know that array.length gives us the length of the array, which is the number of elements in the array. And we also know that array indexes are zero based. So basically, if the length of an array is five, there will only be index zero, one, two, three, and four. There won't be an index five. So here you might be wondering how this is actually working. And it's because, oh, actually there's an error in this method. method. It's not slicer, it's just slice. But it's because this slice method uh, slices up to in, but not including in. So basically this, end value, it's not included in the actual array slice, only the value before it will be included. So for example, if we have an array that looks like that looks like this, the end that we would use for this array would be three, even though that there's only index zero, one, and two, 
it will slice up until end not including end. So this is why we don't need to subtract a one from this, because if we were to subtract a one from array.length and use that as the last index or the end index that is passed to the slice method, then we actually wouldn't get the full array. We would only get up until this one but not including this one so the array would only look like this in the slice i hope that makes sense uh, it's a bit confusing and also keep in mind that with uh, this example i just gave above i'm actually not taking the middle index into consideration so for this array in particular it would look something like array dot slice wow slice and then it would be zero index up until array dot length minus one Anyways, last but not least for our actual merge sort function, what we're going to need to do is implement the recursive portion of the function, which is we're going to return, and bear with me, we're going to return a helper function that we haven't created yet, and we're gonna call it merge. And within this merge helper function, we're going to accept two parameters, which is going to be the left array and the right array. And what we're going to pass to merge is going to be the recursive call to merge sort, and then our left array. And we're also going to pass in the recursive call to merge sort and our right array. This is going to seem a bit confusing right now, but just bear with me. I will explain how this is working and I will try to make things clearer for you. But for now, we don't actually have this uh, merge function, so we need to go ahead and create it. So let's go down here and create this new helper function called merge, which will take in a left array and a right array. Oh, sorry, and uh, it's not merger, it's merge. Now this function is going to be the function that actually merges the two arrays. So the way that merge sort works is we use a divide and conquer approach in which the input array is basically halved until we have n arrays of length one. And at that point, arrays of length one, as mentioned above when we created this base case here, an array of length one is already sorted. So to visualize this, if we have an array that is one, there's only one element in this array. So obviously this one is going to be the first and last element in the array. So there's no need to sort it because there's nothing to compare it to. With what we do in this actual merge function is we're going to bring these sorted arrays together and compare them and then sort those individual one element arrays. So one thing to keep in mind throughout the process of writing this merge function is that this merge function is always going to take in two already ordered arrays, starting with the ordered arrays of length one. So to start, we're going to create a variable which is going to just be the result array. And it's going to start off as an empty array. So result array equals just an empty array. And we're also going to define our base indexes for the left array and the right array. So let left index equal zero. And then we'll do the same thing for right. And next we'll create a while loop that's going to compare the two arrays element by element. Actually, there's a mistake here, it's just length. So within this while loop, we're going to compare each element of both arrays and whichever element is less than the other will get added to the result array. We'll then increment the index of whichever element got added to the result array because that element no longer needs to be compared. If you're a bit confused by this, just bear with me, I'll actually create an illustration for you to understand it better. But for now, let's just write out the code. Now let's imagine that the arrays that we want merged look like this for the left array and this for the right array. Now keep in mind that the merge helper function merges ordered arrays, so it will not work on unordered arrays. 
In this example, we are merging two ordered arrays of length 3 to show the entirety of the function's functionality, but this will also work for naturally sorted arrays of length 1. So for this while loop to continue, both left index and right index need to be less than the length of their corresponding arrays. As you can see, these indexes are incremented every time that index's element is pushed to the result array. So if we draw this out, it looks something like this. Here are the two arrays and their indexes. In this next line, we check to see if the element at the left array index, which is currently 0, is less than the element at the right array index, which is also 0. So is 3 less than 1? No, so that means we do what's in our else condition, which is push the right array element at its current index to the result array and increment the right array index. And now our right array index is 1, so we can move this. And then, once again, we do our comparison at the top of the for loop. Is 3 less than 6? Yes. So we push 3 onto our result array and increment our left array index. And we can move this over as well. And back to the top of our for loop again. Is 12 less than 6? No. So we're going to use the code in our else condition, which is push the right array element 6 to the result array and increment the right index. And again, we will move this. And now, is 12 less than 15? Yes. So we push the 12 from the left array to the result array and then increment the left index as well as move this arrow to the new left index. Now, is 16 less than 15? No. So we move on to our else condition and push the 15 from the right array to our result array and increment the right index by 1. Now at this point, this while loop will terminate because if you remember, this while loop will only continue if the left index is less than the left array's length and the right index is less than the right array's length. At this point, our right index is equal to the right array's length. As you've probably already noticed, there is still a 16 left in the left array that has not yet been pushed to the result array, but the while loop is already complete, so what do we do? After the while loop, we're going to add another line of code that looks like this. So this return is going to return a single array that is a combination or a concatenation of three arrays, the result array, a slice of the left array, and a slice of the right array. So this slice function, if we only pass one index to it, it will be used as the start of the slice and will slice up until the end of the array. Let's break this down. So if you remember from the last slide, our result array currently looks like this and we're going to add to it a slice from the left array starting from the left index that we incremented, which is 2, which results in an array containing only this part. And we're going to add to that a slice of the right array starting from the right index that we incremented, which is 3, which results in an empty array because index 3 would be here. And with all of those combined, the result being returned is an ordered array that looks like this. And now, let's go ahead and add in the return that we just discussed in the illustration. And this completes our merge function. And now that the merge function is complete, our merge sort function is also complete. And now we can go ahead and test this out. To test this, we will need to create an array. And this array we will need to pass to our merge sort function. And there you have it, our sorted array. And if we take the time to go back in here and have a look at the code, you'll see that within this merge sort function, we're dividing the input array in two recursively, which makes this merge sort portion of the function O of log n. And actually this merge function is O of n because it needs to touch every element within both arrays to actually sort them. So with this merge function being O of n, and the actual recursive merge sort function being o of log n. For every level up until the depth of this recursive function, we're actually going to be doing this merge, which is o of n. 
So to get the overall time complexity, we would just have to multiply the depth of this recursive function by O of n, which is O of n log n, because O of n log n is just multiplying n by log n. And log n in this case will be the depth at which this recursive function needs to traverse. And if this isn't making sense to you, please take the time to check out my other video that actually explains in detail why merge sort is all vin log in. And if you've liked this video, please take the time to like and subscribe. It really helps me out and I'll see you in the next one.